Hi, welcome back. So today I'm going to be doing this look. Um, you know, seasonal depression is hitting me hard, my friends. And writing a proposal for a PhD program is not the easy. So I'm a little wiped out. It's so gray and rainy here every day, every day. And I'm so exhausted and just, I wanna see the sun. I wanna sit in some grass. Heck, I would even be happy if it just snowed and it was just bright out in general. It's just in the Pacific Northwest, it's so dark here. And I've lived out here for like five and a half years at this point and heck dude, like I just, I'm, I'm not used to the winters here. I grew up in New York and Pennsylvania and like, I'm not a stranger to a really harsh, cold, gray winter, but there's something about the winters here in Seattle and Portland and the two places that I've lived in the Pacific Northwest where it's just so rainy. So And like, that's the nature of the beast. Like that's what you sign up for when you move out here, but it's just like, you don't realize how much <laughs> it really impacts like your mental health and it's just really important to stay on top of it. So that's my little PSA for the day is to take care of yourself if you live out here in the winter time because you get real sad, you get real sad. You, you start to kind of have this really meta moment where you're like, wow, the outside looks how I feel on the inside. So if this is your first time to my channel, welcome. Welcome to this bright, cheery place. Um, I'm currently doing a project called Using All of My Makeup Project in which I will not be buying any new makeup in 2023 until I have used every single product in my everyday makeup arsenal. Approaching the end. But we're not quite there yet. I still have a lot of blushes and single eyeshadows to go through. So um, yeah, I've successfully gone through all of my complexion products, all of my highlighters almost. I think I have like one or two highlighters left to use. Um, gone through all of my bronzers. And um, if you've missed any of my videos, I do have um, a plethora of videos that I've been posting the past like week or two and I don't know what's time and I have been saving it onto my shop my stash and I've also been creating shorts on my YouTube channel. I haven't really been posting on like my TikTok or my Instagram because I just I'm not into it. I just I don't know like maybe I've outgrown those platforms a little bit and it's just it's not the way I remember it and it's like nobody's seeing my content and like I feel like my YouTube life in the short time that I've had it has grown so quickly. Not that I have a lot of followers in the grand scheme of things, but like, I'm sorry, my cat is just screaming in the background. But anyways, I've obtained like more followers in like three days than it, it took me almost a year of being on Instagram with makeup. Yeah, it, it just kind of blows my mind with how the algorithm works on there and like nobody's seeing my stuff and I originally started it because my friends would always ask me how to do makeup looks and so I started that Instagram to just do fun little reels of me using my makeup and then it kind of turned into me making this YouTube channel because I love YouTube and I've been a YouTube watcher for since its inception. You know, it came out when I was a teenager. So anyways, um... What a weird intro. Like here's a glimpse into my brain, chaos, chaos. Anyways, so I really want it to be springtime. So I decided to do like a very dewy spring look. And uh, yeah, let's get into the look. All right, so I'm starting with my newfound beloved combination of the Oric Glow Lust and the Laura Mercier Tinted Moisturizer. So I did a little experiment the one day when I did my complexion um, off camera here. And uh, I just used the Laura Mercier by itself. It was dry, it patched up in all the like regular places. And um, yeah, it's just like I can't use, I can't use that tinted moisturizer without the Oric Glow Lust. The Oric Glow Lust really is like the star of the show in all of this. I just take like two, two dibby dabs and I just kind of smear one on each cheek and then 
blend it out with my sponge. Mix those together in a very seamless, beautiful way. Yeah, it's, it, I'm, I'm happy that I found this combination or more so that I actually purchased the Auric Glow List um, because I was pretty put off by the Laura Mercier Tinted Moisturizer for <laughs> almost a year. I feel like I've had this product for almost a year and hopefully I can use it up this year. It's kind of one of my project pans. I feel like the majority of complexion things that I have in my arsenal right now um, are in Project Pan because I they are starting, they're not getting old, old, but like they're getting aged, if there's a difference. But yeah, that we'll just blend this out a little bit more. It's very lovely, very like glossy. And for more of like a glass skin kind of dewy, youthful look today. Now taking the Kosas Revealer Concealer in the shade 3W and just putting it where I need it, which is just like a little bit of darkness around my eyes. I'll put a little bit on the chin, some spots. I like to dab it right here because for some reason my face is always red there. Somewhat right here, a little bit down the nose. I tend to get red like right at the tippy tops of my eyebrows. It's kind of strange. And blending that out. On the areas that I want more coverage, I tend to blend that out last because it allows the emollients to dry down a little bit and thus providing a little bit more coverage. He just gets in these moods, I don't know. So as you can see, this is the complexion. Oh my god, I'm gonna sneeze. This is the complexion done. Very shiny, very lovely. I'm bringing down my neck a little bit. It's, uh, this part of my body is always so like much paler than the rest of me. It's kind of bizarre. There is the complexion. Now I'm gonna move on to bronzer, which is the Say bronzer because I've gone through all my bronzers. Yay! All right, Say bronzer, taking the same sponge. Cause I just, uh, I'm a simple lady. I'm a simple lady. And I'm just gonna do a very light layer of this right on the perimeter. Do like the subtle difference. That's what we're going for, baby. I don't have much to say today. I'm kind of brain dead. Cause I've just been doing like research and like writing proposals and I'm just a little tired. Like, I don't feel like I have my like normal quips about me today. I'm just a little, I'm a little out of it. I've been reading, well, I guess listening to audiobooks right now because my eyes are so tired throughout the day currently. And I've been re listening to Game of Thrones. I've watched the series a million times. I've read the book series, like all five of them, at least three times, I think now. But I've never listened to the audiobook. And boy, oh boy, is it a whole other experience. And oh, it has me in the chokehold again. I always like, I'm like, oh, I know what happens, but it's got me. Since we're going for a spring themed kind of pretty dewy makeup thing today, I pulled out Tiger Lily Queen, and this is uh, Nude Sticks Dewy Formula. It's not that I don't like this blush, it's just very vibrant, and it really is like star of the show when you wear it. You know, it's very bright, it, it, it's, it's so pretty, it's so pretty. And it's the kind of color I feel like anybody could pull this off if like having a statement blush is like, their comfort zone, you know? My humble opinion, I take this on a brush because this is sticky. Um, there's no such thing as like the wrong color blush for anyone. It's just more so like, look at that. It's just more so, are you comfortable with wearing a lot of blush? And if so, like what are your favorite colors? Um, I don't, really subscribe to the notion that everybody has their perfect shade and not everybody agree agrees with this but this is just my opinion it's more so like i gravitate towards like terracottas and 
brown leaning nudes because I like a sun-kissed look and that's what I'm most comfortable in and I like to drape my blush because I kind of have like a more roundish face like I got chubby little cheeks and I have a really small face too like I'm a kind of a small person I'm only five foot two and like I like a blush that I can take up high and kind of creates like an elongation of my face like just gives me a little extra sculpt um, but when it comes to these kind of vibrant blushes, I don't really own a lot of them because they're just out of my comfort zone, but it doesn't mean that they look bad on me. Like, no blush is gonna look bad on anyone. Um, but yeah, anyways, what was I, where was I, my original point with this? I'm gonna talk about the formula. So I was gonna talk about the formula of these. These, for a dewy blush, last a really long time, but they are pretty sticky, and they aren't the most, like, cooperative with other dewy products and we might see that today when I try to use the highlighter that I'm going to use even though like this is so dewy that you don't need a highlighter you know but I just it's education we're just we're just playing with makeup today anyways um I don't really grab these so much because I do usually make my base like a hydrating emollient layer. So I, I like to use a tinted moisturizer. I like to use like illuminating primers. Um, I love a liquid highlight. And so when I apply something dewy, like a blush, it does run the risk of like being too much and just like kind of being way too sticky and more so like, I don't mind a sticky blush, but I don't really like the feeling of heaviness on my face. It makes me feel like everything in the air is sticking to my face and I'm not really into that. Um, so yeah, I like to tend to more like natural finish and or like a matte finish with my blushes because I feel like it becomes more emollient and more dewy because of the base you have underneath it. Anyways, that's my opinion. That's another opinion. <laughs> what am I saying? It's just with the brush, I'm gonna take my sponge and just kind of melt that in just a little bit. A flawless makeup base, in my experience, is going back and forth with a brush and a sponge. This applies your pigment. This diffuses and picks up any excess product that can contribute to cake face later in the day. So. Yeah, just see the difference there. That's so pretty. Yeah, so. <laughs> and I just go back and forth. But yeah, as you see, like, not a color I gravitate towards, but it doesn't really mean that it looks bad. The matte nude stick blushes are my favorite because even though they are matte, they do have like an emollience to them that allows them to blend effortlessly, even if your base isn't dewy. But the dewy blushes are incredibly dewy. I do prefer a dewy blush more so like the um uh what is it called uh Rowan's Natural Rose that I've tried at the end of last year and that dewy blush um it's not sticky and it lasts a really long time and it works really well with other dewy products so I would recommend that one over this formula, even though this formula has an abundance of colors. But who knows, maybe you'll like this too. Try them both, I don't know. Am I making sense with anything I'm saying today? I didn't realize how tired I was. Um, speaking of dewy products, I'm gonna be going in with the Kevin Aquan Glass Glow Face. This is a really interesting product. It's very slimy. I don't know how else to explain it. It's just like kind of slimy and it's not for everyone. It's like this very um, ooey gooey and it, it just it just does what it says it does. It gives you a glass effect to your face, you know, and it's really nice for editorial looks. It does not dry down. It's, I really saturate my sponge in this because you can go overboard with this really, really easily. Um, yeah, it does not dry down. It's very like Vaseline hydration, but it's very beautiful. So I'm just gonna stick this on the top. You see how that just amped that up. You can use a brush or your fingers, but I do find that this gums up my brushes very quick. Like it's one of those products that you have to wash your brush after you use it or else it's just gonna be like sticky and weird. 
So I just stick it on a sponge and it kind of helps distribute it in a more even way. I really gotta cut my bangs. Um, but yeah, that's very fresh, very youthful looking. And so this is like a sticky cheek. Like this is not going to dry down. This is not going to be like I can hang out in my bed and like, you know, watch a movie or like, you know, put my cheek up against somebody without <laughs> going long hair. This might not be for you. I remember when I had my very large mane of hair, this got caught in it quite frequently. But like, if you care about that, you care about that. It might not be for you. But if you don't, and you like this kind of finish, maybe try it. It comes in a variety of colors and they're all pretty flexible. I feel like you could leave it here and it would be a very beautiful, like natural look. Um, but we're not, we're gonna go in with, I feel like every video I've filmed has had Rowan eyeshadows in it but I just have so many so I gotta get through them okay um I promise the next one will not be Rowan I, I, I promise does that mean I won't or does that mean I will what does this mean I'm taking the disco eyes so I'm gonna be taking summer disco as the base and then the original disco on top so they're two more dry formulas than so if you own the Rowan quads you'll know that they're very emollient and very like you warm them up with the like heat from your fingers. But these are more like dry. So this is the regular disco and this is like kind of a, a neutral, warm leaning champagne with like really big hunks of glitter throughout it. And you have to really, it has finely milled glitters but also like really large chunks of glitter in it as well. So you have to really dig in there to get the larger chunks. Um, but for the swatches sake, so the oranging, oranging, the oranging, so the orangey kind of one, the peachy orange, it has like purple glitters dispersed throughout it. And then this is the regular disco eye. And them together is like the ultimate beautiful, like, ah. Uh, but yeah, so you can see, and they're drier, but they do give a very, like, sparkly, wet look effect. And in my opinion, if you own the 75 degree palette, you don't need these. And vice versa, if you have both of these, don't get the 75 degree palette because you can get a very similar effect by using both of these and or if you just use a couple of shades in the 75 degree palette, you don't need the disco eyes. But yeah, let's uh, put them on my face now. I'm starting with the Summer Disco, which is this peachy orange shimmer. And it has like gold and in certain lights, it kind of looks like there's some purple in there. And these do not crease. These are very dry. There's like little to no emollients in them, but they don't look dry on the eyes. And I'm just putting that all over the lid because on top I'm going to be putting the Disco Eye. So this is Summer Disco. And they're perfect one and done. like you don't need both, but I think both together they work very beautifully. And they apply so effortless and so quick, as you can see. And you could keep it there, but I'm not gonna. Okay, and now taking the Disco Eye, I'm really gonna like dig in and get, and you can see like it gets a little more chunky once you like really dig in. And I'm just gonna like tap and swipe this all over the lid. And this is one of those like imperfect, perfect type of one and done shades where the glitter disbursement isn't gonna look the same each time because there are so many different shaped and sized champagne-y type of chunky glitter through here and not chunky in a way where you look like a I don't know like Y2K I don't really know how to explain that look but um it's not chunky in like like a kitschy way it's chunky in like an actual disco ball way hence the name ho huh? taking that up to the brow bone And that is, wow, 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 like in the light here, holy heck, bones! 
Sometimes when he like meows in the hallway for attention, it literally sounds like he's like, mom, mom. There she is. It's so pretty, it's so pretty. Hopefully in the, I'm using the viewfinder for reference, but hopefully the lighting, you can see like all of the different chunks, all like elegant and like, just so pretty. It adds to the, like the glowy kind of springtimey look. I love wearing this. I love wearing these two together. I just think they look so good together. Something I think is important to add, the Kevin Aquan um, Glass Glow Highlighter. I don't know if you can see it on my hand here, but there are a lot of like different little glitters and whatnot through it. But that doesn't transfer onto the face. Like you don't see that kind of glitter on your face. But I do think it's just like this very, and I don't even want to say that it's like glitter, it's like a shimmer. It's almost like mica suspended in like Vaseline. I don't know how else to explain it. But as you see, like my cheeks do not look glittery in that way. And when I'm out in the sun, it doesn't pick up like that. But when I wipe it away, what remains is like this kind of like moisturized hand that has some shimmery particles on it but yeah just something to keep in mind so if you ever see this product and you're like ah that looks like that's just like a shimmer goo it is a shimmer goo but there's no shimmer on your face <laughs> i'm gonna take the tower 28 make waves mascara and just do a very light layer of this i feel like i'm almost to the end of this tube actually it's starting to dry up i'm either like almost to the end of the tube or it's not aging gracefully. So um, we will see, we will see. I don't know, actually, I, now that I'm like using it more on this eye, I don't think I'm almost out. I just think that it's starting to age. So much for a light layer, geez. Okay. You can amp up the volume with this so fast. Like it's so effortless. Such a good mascara. I guess I should say that it's not not aging gracefully, but it, I can definitely tell that it is aging. There she is. Right, and for lips, I was kind of struggling with what I wanted to do as my collection is dwindling with usage. Um, but I decided to go with the NARS Afterglow Lip Balm. I have this in the shade Torrid. And easy peasy, like I said in a previous video, I have, I think, almost all of the shades. And as you can see, it's very sheer, very like lip balm-esque, because that's what it is. But so pretty. It's so pretty. And I think it suits like the blush and eye look so perfectly. It's kind of a, a coral, like a sheer coral. Yeah, I love these. This is the type of formula that you can find in almost, like most makeup brands carry some type of formula like this, but this is my personal favorite. Yeah, yeah, I love that. I love that. I just want spring. I'm just really itching for spring, man. This happens like every January where I'm like, okay, Christmas is done. Bring on the birdies, bring on the sun. My seasonal depression just has me. Like Game of Thrones, seasonal depression has me in like a chokehold. Like I'm just feeling real tired real tired. Okay, hopefully this video was coherent enough for me to like edit it in a way that it's postable. Even if it's not, I'll post it anyway so you guys can get a chuckle. <laughs> so that was the look. Um, I hope you enjoyed. This is a little different for me. Um, and even then it's not that different. You know, I love a dewy dewy skin, a sheer lip, and like a sparkly eye with very large lashes. That's kind of my go-to, but this is just a little bit more of like a kiss of spring. Primavera. Okay, that's it. Thank you so much for watching and 
you know, I'm not done yet. So uh, stay tuned for more to come. Bye!